Have you ever wondered how oxygen delivery varies between a simple nasal cannula and more advanced methods like a high-flow nasal cannula or a non-rebreather mask? Choosing the right device can significantly impact patient outcomes. In this video, we'll break down the key differences between these devices, covering their function, flow rates, oxygen delivery, clinical uses, and pros and cons, so you can confidently select the best option for your patients. The conventional nasal cannula is one of the simplest and most commonly used devices for delivering supplemental oxygen. It consists of two small prongs that sit inside the nostrils, providing oxygen directly to the patient. The flow rate for a conventional nasal cannula typically ranges from 1 to 6 liters per minute. The fraction of inspired oxygen increases by approximately 3 to 4% per liter per minute, starting at around 24% at 1 liter per minute and reaching up to 44% at 6 liters per minute. This device is often used for patients with mild hypoxia or those who require a slight increase in oxygen levels. It is also commonly prescribed for long-term home oxygen therapy in patients with chronic hypoxemia, such as those with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. The biggest advantages of the conventional nasal cannula are its comfort, ease of use, and the ability for patients to talk and eat while wearing it. It is widely used in both hospital and home settings. However, since patients inhale a mix of oxygen and room air, the nasal cannula provides variable oxygen concentrations that can fluctuate depending on the patient's breathing pattern. The oxygen delivered through a standard wall outlet or portable tank is typically dry unless a humidifier attachment is used. When used at flow rates above 4 liters per minute without humidification, it can cause dryness and irritation of the nasal passages. The simple face mask is an upgrade from the nasal cannula covering both the nose and mouth to deliver higher oxygen concentrations. It is commonly used when patients require more oxygen than a nasal cannula can provide, but do not yet need a more advanced delivery system. The flow rate for a simple face mask typically ranges from 6 to 10 liters per minute, delivering an approximate fraction of inspired oxygen between 35 and 50 percent. This mask is often used in patients who need moderate oxygen support. It is easy to use and widely available, making it a convenient option in hospital settings. However, like the nasal cannula, it provides a variable oxygen concentration, as patients can still inhale some room air around the edges of the mask. One drawback is that patients must remove the mask to eat or drink, which can be inconvenient. Some patients may also find the mask uncomfortable or claustrophobic when worn for extended periods. The Venturi mask stands out because it delivers a fixed fraction of inspired oxygen. A useful way to remember this is that the letter V in Venturi stands for very accurate oxygen delivery. This precision is achieved through a built-in valve system that controls how much room air is mixed with the incoming oxygen, ensuring a specific fraction of inspired oxygen at a given flow rate. The fraction of inspired oxygen delivered depends on the color-coded Venturi adapters. Blue adapter, 24% at 2 liters per minute. White adapter, 28% at 4 liters per minute. Orange adapter, 31% at 6 liters per minute. Yellow adapter, 35% at 8 liters per minute. Red adapter, 40% at 10 liters per minute. Green adapter, 50% at 15 liters per minute. The Venturi mask is particularly beneficial for patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease as they require precise oxygen delivery to prevent carbon dioxide retention. Since the Venturi mask's entrainment ports and adapters tightly regulate the oxygen-air mixture, patients receive a constant fraction of inspired oxygen that does not fluctuate with their breathing pattern. Like other oxygen devices, the oxygen from a Venturi mask is typically dry unless a specialized humidifier is attached. Additionally, for the mask to work correctly, it must be properly fitted to the patient's face to prevent leaks and ensure accurate oxygen delivery. The non-rebreather mask is a high concentration oxygen delivery device consisting of a face mask attached to a reservoir bag filled with nearly 100% oxygen. It features two one-way valves, one over the reservoir bag and another over the exhalation ports. These valves allow carbon dioxide to escape while preventing room air from entering during inhalation, ensuring that the patient receives a high fraction of inspired oxygen. 
the flow rate for a non-rebreather mask ranges from 10 to 15 liters per minute, delivering an oxygen concentration of approximately 80 to 100 percent. The minimum required flow rate is 10 liters per minute to keep the reservoir bag inflated and ensure adequate oxygen delivery. The non-rebreather mask is designed for critical situations requiring a high concentration of oxygen quickly. It is commonly used in acute respiratory distress, severe hypoxia, trauma, shock, or other life-threatening conditions where the patient is still breathing but requires maximum oxygen support. This makes it a go-to device in rapid response and emergency settings. Despite its effectiveness, the non-rebreather mask is not a long-term solution. One limitation is that it cannot deliver less than 10 liters per minute, making it unsuitable for patients with lower oxygen requirements. Additionally, it requires a tight seal around the face to prevent air leakage, which may cause discomfort for some patients. The high-flow nasal cannula is an advanced oxygen delivery system capable of providing heated and humidified oxygen at much higher flow rates than a conventional nasal cannula. The flow rate can range from 10 liters per minute to as high as 60 liters per minute, and the fraction of inspired oxygen can be precisely set between posh 21%, room air, and 100%, offering greater control over oxygen delivery compared to other devices. This device is particularly useful in hypoxic respiratory failure, such as pneumonia or COVID-19, where it can help prevent the need for intubation. It can also serve as a bridge to more invasive support, giving patients time to stabilize before mechanical ventilation is required. One of the key benefits of the high-flow nasal cannula is its ability to wash out carbon dioxide from the nasopharyngeal dead space, improving gas exchange. Additionally, it provides a small amount of positive pressure, similar to continuous positive airway pressure. This effect is estimated at approximately 0.7 centimeters of water positive end expiratory pressure, PEEP, for every 10 liters per minute of flow, helping to keep the airways open and reduce work of breathing. Another major advantage is comfort. Because the delivered oxygen is both heated and humidified, patients tolerate it better than a simple face mask or a non-rebreather mask, reducing discomfort and dryness. However, the high-flow nasal cannula has some drawbacks. It is not widely available and requires specialized equipment, making it less accessible than simpler oxygen devices. Additionally, while it is excellent for providing high-flow oxygen, it is not ideal for patients needing immediate, very high oxygen concentrations, such as those in severe respiratory distress, where a non-rebreather mask would be preferred. To help remember the oxygen delivery devices in order of increasing oxygen delivery, use the memnemonic. No simple vent needs high flow. No for nasal cannula. Low flow, variable oxygen concentration. Dry unless humidified. Simple for simple face mask. Higher flow, variable oxygen concentration. Dry unless humidified. Vent reminds of Venturi mask. Very accurate oxygen concentration. Dry. Color-coded valves for precise fraction of inspired oxygen. Needs for non-rebreather mask. High oxygen delivery, one-way valves, dry, cannot deliver less than 10 liters per minute. High flow for high flow nasal cannula, provides fixed oxygen concentration, humidified and heated oxygen, washes out carbon dioxide, and offers positive airway pressure. Selecting the appropriate oxygen delivery device depends on the patient's oxygen requirements, respiratory effort, and clinical condition. Understanding these differences is essential for ensuring optimal oxygenation and preventing complications.